that's why. <laughs> Hey y'all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the great state of California, or specifically San Francisco, and I'm here at the Oak Lawn Cemetery, and I am here to visit a very important man. I'm here to visit the only emperor of the United States of America. So who was Emperor Norton? Emperor Norton was initially a very wealthy businessman and uh, landowner that lived in the San Francisco area. He actually emigrated from South Africa. And he ended up losing all his money on a bad rice deal. And he kind of faded into obscurity. Uh, lost all his money, kind of vanished from public sight, maybe was homeless for a while. He reemerged in 1859. Emperor Norton appeared back in San Francisco and he declared himself Emperor of the United States of America. Yes, this is the grave. Joshua A. Norton, better known as Norton I, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. Now the funny thing is, the people in San Francisco, they didn't argue with him. They didn't tell him Dude, you're not the emperor. They uh, they went along with it. They uh, allowed him to make his own money and spend it at all the local businesses. People would salute and bow when he walked by and treated him with all the grandeur of a real emperor. And he was dead serious. He went on uh, making declarations. He actually declared that Congress would be disbanded because he felt that they were crooked. And um, then he actually demanded that the police go and, and remove all the members of Congress from Washington, D.C. They actually refused. They did, that's what's one order of, of Norton's they did not go along with. The, the police did not try to overthrow the United States government. Also of note, he uh, abolished the Democratic and Republican Party, which, hmm, maybe this guy's on to something. But Norton wasn't like a pure crackpot. He actually had ideas about infrastructure and demanded bridges be built in uh, in San Francisco. And later, actually later, bridges that he had ordered would be built in the exact spots that he had asked. So he did have some sort of mind for governing. He just had a funny way of about uh, assuming power and, uh, and Norton was actually institutionalized very shortly um, when the police apprehended him and placed him in a mental hospital and the people of San Francisco were outraged and, and, and petitioned for the police to release Emperor Norton and they did on the, on the, on the, on the, the public outrage the chief of police actually released Norton and gave an official apology for putting him in a mental hospital. And Norton, the kind soul that he was, granted a pardon to the chief of police. But perhaps most impressively of all, when there was riots between the white members of San Francisco and the Chinese members of San Francisco, uh, there was actually apparently going to be a, a large riot with the two sides facing off each other. And Emperor Norton stepped between the two fighting parties and recited the Lord's Prayer over and over again until the entire riot dispersed. So he was able to disperse the entire riot just with peaceful protest. And in 1970, uh, he actually did, they did the U.S. Census. They listed Norton's occupation as emperor, but then they put an asterisk and like put, he's insane. So as most mortals do, Emperor Norton died. He had dropped, dropped dead on a street corner and the city initially made um, arrangements to have him placed in a potter's field, an unmarked potter's grave. But the people of San Francisco, they loved them some Norton, and they rallied around to get him buried here in the Oak Lawn Cemetery. And uh, they say over 10,000 people attended his funeral. And it appears that uh, people still come by to Emperor Norton's grave to pay their respects. This says, 
the Upper Norton Legacy League honors the lifetimes and legacy of Joshua Abram Norton, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. And a few other items here. I see a bag of rice. I guess that is a uh, shout out to his rice dealing days. There is a, a, a toilet brush, which I'm not really sure about that. But uh, yeah, an amazing man and the only emperor of America. Now the majority of graves in this cemetery are uh, of Asian descent, which is kind of appropriate given that um, Norton actually stood up for the Asian population. And in modern times, Emperor Norton's grave has even become a Pokemon gym. But our tale does not end here, as we are going to check out uh, a monument to two other famous San Franciscans that are entwined in the tale of Emperor Norton. All right, I am at Transamerica Redwood Park, where the monuments of these other two famous San Franciscans are. The park has a problem in that it is locked. It's not open right now, but I think with this zoom lens, we can get a shot of this monument. Zoom, 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 zoom. I know it's far away, but you can see there's a plaque with two dogs on it. That is a plaque dedicated to Bummer and Lazarus, the two most famous dogs in San Francisco history. Mid-century 1800s, there was a wild dog problem in San Francisco. They said that dogs outnumbered humans two to one, so they would run the streets and people would actually euthanize them, kill them, poison them, get rid of them. And the only dogs that were allowed to stay around were ones that were good at killing rats. Because the only thing that people in San Francisco hated more than dogs was rats. And then there was an incident with, with two dogs, a uh, bummer and Lazarus. Bummer was a, he called Bummer because he would bum food off people, but he was also an excellent rat killer. And he would rescue a younger dog named Lazarus, and he would protect him. They became just like the most famous icons of the city. They actually had a running cartoon where they would uh, feature Bummer, Lazarus, and Emperor Norton. And Lazarus was portrayed as this, this mooch, that only cared about uh, himself. And Bummer was this giving dog that would would, would protect everyone. Uh, this was this was because when uh, Bummer was injured, that Lazarus uh, went and found another dog to run around with. And they were known to be associates of Emperor Norton. They would uh, you know travel with him. He'd feed them. He never officially owned them. He was just friends with them. Uh, and apparently he had some uh, some issue with the fact that as Emperor of the United States that uh, cartoonists should not be drawing pictures of him hanging out with stray dogs. And apparently it wasn't all peaches and cream. Apparently the dogs would murder sheep and would also uh, just ransack things, steal food from towns. But they were kind of protected because they were beloved. Now in 1863 Lazarus would die. He would be kicked by a horse or, depending on who you talk to, he was poisoned. Either poisoned or kicked by a, a fire horse. And of course, Bummer was never the same. He lived a life of sadness and loneliness until he succumbed to death himself. And his obituary was written by none other than Mark Twain. Now, the dogs were actually taxidermied and kept in a museum. Uh, but they were actually taken off display and in 1910, for whatever reason, the museum decided to destroy the taxidermy. So sadly, we can never visit Bummer or Lazarus. But I think a lot of this, to me at least, I'm not very familiar with the city of San Francisco. To me, this shows uh, kind of the mindset uh, of San Francisco, a city willing to wholeheartedly embrace a, a mentally ill man claiming to be emperor and a couple of stray dogs that they thought were adorable. So, just a warm, friendly city from, from so far what I've gathered. Now, here on Commercial Street in downtown San Francisco is where Emperor Norton used to live. This was a boarding house. This uh, is currently apartments and it's been blocked off so you can't go in there. But you can actually see through the trees up there, the building that Emperor Norton resided in. Check out those giant pants in front of Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, 
I did not know these existed. This is a self-cleaning toilet, currently cleaning itself. Oh my goodness. What a time to be alive. You're pretty, you're pretty stoked about this? I don't really care that it's cleaning itself. I just need to use the facilities. All right. Oh, that's so crazy. You gotta be fast about it because it opens automatically after 20 minutes. And if it does that, all the people on Fisherman's Wharf will see you pooping. Well, yeah, you can hear it just being deep clean. I just made a little pee pee and it's cleaning the entire bathroom. Oh, wow, look at that. Check this out, we're over at Fisherman's Wharf. This boat is called the Harbor Emperor, and it actually has Emperor Norton as a masthead. That is amazing. Out here on Pier 39, the famous San Francisco Sea Lions, as they grumble and shout at each other. The beautiful, majestic call of the sea lion. Looks like these two are engaged in mortal combat. This one, this one wants a belly rub. We actually have some love locks here on Pier 39 where people declare their love for each other and then lock it onto this fence. You can see a whole bunch more over here. This used to be famous at a, at a bridge in France, but because France is no fun, they actually removed all their locks. So, God bless America. This old drawbridge here, looks like it used to be used to maybe launch boats into the water. 